So here we have a picture of the common eastern gray squirrel, which is uh, the subject of this video. Well, how's it going this afternoon? So, I don't know how many of you have ever heard of squirrel dumplings, but they're probably the best thing you've ever put in your mouth. Now, Sam killed three squirrels the other day, and so I agreed to show him how to make dumplings, squirrel dumplings. And I've had a lot of people, these are just normal southern gray squirrels. They're not fox squirrels, they're just a standard gray squirrel. And they're about as delicate as meat as you've ever had. I love squirrel dumplings probably better than anything. So Sam is has learned to hunt and he's a very good hunter. And I'm gonna teach him how to make these dumplings. So he's gonna help me here. Uh, he's gonna kinda run the camera for me. But I'm gonna show you these squirrels first. Now, we've had them in the refrigerator. I don't know if you can see them right here. I'm gonna put them out on the plate so you can see them a little better. And I'll show you how we cut them up. But these are, these squirrels are not terribly old, but they're not real young either. So they're gonna, it's probably gonna take about an hour, hour and a half to stew them down to where they'll be good and tender. But this is the ham. That's the ham off one of them. And that is excellent. Uh, this is the backbones and ribs, which helps to flavor the broth, and, and there's good meat on it. But this right here is the absolute best part on the squirrel. These are the back straps and the tenderloins right here. You won't find any better meat anywhere. Now, so I've had these... Uh, I put them in the refrigerator last night. We salted them down good with just kosher salt. And uh, we just let them set overnight. And my grandmother, who was an excellent shot in her own right and made great dumplings, but any kind of wild game that she had she would always salt it, whether it be a squirrel or a venison, anything that she had fish, especially fish. She would salt the inside cavity of a fish and just let it sit in the refrigerator uh, for two or three days. And it just makes the meat, it, it's not really a marinade, but it's just good and you don't have to, whatever salt you've already got on the meat's going to go into the broth anyway. Now for these dumplings, it's important with dumplings that you have plenty of room for them to cook. You don't want to be crowding your dumplings. So I'm going to use a fairly large pan. This thing's ten and a half inches in diameter. It's five inches deep. Now I don't remember how many quarts that is, but it's plenty big for these, uh, for the squirrel dumplings. So right now we're going to, uh, I'm going to dump the squirrel in here and I'm going to put, cover them uh, pretty liberally with just cold water. Anytime you're making a broth or a stew, you want to start with cold water and bring it up real slow and, and let your meat, give that meat plenty of time to render out its flavor. So we're going to put, put the squirrel in here. Then we're gonna we're gonna put water in it, and then we're gonna put it on the stove. So while we're doing that, I'm gonna let Sam go over and get the camera, and he'll be the cameraman from now on. So we'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, we've got water on our squirrel, 
And we're going to just start it on real low and just let it come up real gently and it'll, it'll extract all that good flavor out of that squirrel. So we're going to turn him on here. Get a shot of the burner there, Sam. All right, we're going to turn it down. These burners are about 25,000 BTU, so they they get stuff going in a hurry. So I'm going to turn them down to about right there. And just, it's trying to light. I've got to cut down so far. All right, that's going to work right there. So we're going to stop just a second, and I'll get everything ready to make the dumplings while the squirrels are going to stew. Okay, so as you see, the squirrel is uh, starting to get going here. And I don't know if you can notice, but you can see the color of the water starting to change. Now, up to this point, there's been no seasoning added, only except what was on the squirrel from, uh, from out of the refrigerator. So now we're going to start to season it a little bit. And I'll give you a little bit of a secret that we... Uh, we use when making any kind of dumplings or whatever. Uh, I'm going to add just plain so uh, kosher salt, and I'm going to get quite a bit of it. Because by the time we're finished with the broth, it'll be about twice what you see in there. Now... Here's the secret that we like to use. This is, uh, and you can get this in the Mexican section at your grocery store and save yourself a lot of money. But uh, it's uh, chicken bullion, uh, caldo sabor a pollo. And it's, uh, you can take a big spoonful of that and sprinkle that right around in there and that will, that will really flavor that up. So that's one trick. And we're going to let that, uh, we're going to let that sit and stew a while. Just going to stir that salt and, and uh, bullion in. And I can't find my... All right, we're going to lay that right there, and that's going to set. We're going to get it rolling pretty good here. This stove is a... When I built the house, we, uh, we had gone through the blizzard of 93 with all electric appliances, and we were without power for a week, so when we built this house... I told Jeannie, I said, we're going to have ga uh, gas everything, so at least we can cook. And so we initially got a gas range and a gas oven. And she didn't like the gas oven, but it just didn't bake like an electric oven. So we swapped this out. We redid the kitchen about four years ago when I retired. And... Uh, we bought this Capital Range. Now these are open burners. It's made in America. And the three burners here, they will do 25,000 BTUs. I mean, they get hot and they get hot in a hurry. Uh, and if you've ever went from electric to gas, there's just no comparison on a cooktop. But now, she didn't like the oven that well, so the oven on this one, this is a dual fuel, and the oven on this one is electric. So, I like the stove a lot. Uh, the racks, they could have done a little better with, but anyway, it's, it's a good stove. But they, uh, but now, if you ever get used to gasoline cooktop, uh, or not a gasoline, but a and this one's propane because we don't have LP here. I mean, we don't have natural gas, but uh, this one's propane, but it does just fine. So I'm going to put the lid back on this, cut this back down, just let it sit. Because it'll try to boil over on you in a hurry. I'm going to crack the lid just a little bit. All right, 
We'll be back in a little bit.